Hello again everyone, welcome back to another episode where we review Catalan games played by Grandmaster. The mission here is to remember as many relevant patterns as possible. Just on the previous episode we talked about a sideline in the Catalan with an unusual move of Queen to A4. This move guarantees nothing for white in the opening, but does grant white a more comfortable edge in playing and ease in development. Example is a game between Carjuana and Duda from 2019. Here Duda plays pawn to c6, one of the typical way to advance. We can also play pawn to a6 and pawn to b5. That is one option. Duda chose to play pawn to c6 and up to queen to a4 to play pawn to b5. Attacking a queen with tempo, exerting queen side pressure. Now just to be clear, we normally don't play queen to a4 in this position. Normally the move is queen to c2. As you can see, preparing a4, a5 push and also trying to get this pawn back as soon as possible. Knight to e5, also another option to get this pawn here on c4, releasing the bishop on a long diagonal. Queen a4 is suboptimal because it does not allow white to play pawn to a4, instead allows black to play pawn to a6, pawn to c6 and then pawn to b5 in the future. But the game continues, um, and after queen to b3, chosen by Fabiano Corjuana, you can also play queen to c2, but queen to b3, we do see bishop to b7, protecting the pawn here on c6. Black looks to actually bring the pawn here to a6, and the pawn to c5 in the future, and try to have an attack on the queen's side, with all this pawn marching off the board. Fabiano continues with a move that controls the center, you see with rook to d1 and knight to e5 here. A lot of tension in the center of the board, plus this bishop here is actually active from a long diagonal, and so did I correctly trade off the knight on e5 and place knight to d7. The game continues logically, and due to Duda's placement of pieces, he is allowed to attack first hand with pawn to b4. Now if you've gotten this position as black, you're probably pretty good, especially if your opponent is Fabian or Carjuana. And not every day you can actually create a pressing attack like this on the queen's side. And to be honest, probably the most accurate way to continue for black right here, because of how dominant white's pieces are in the center of the board. Now, onto business. The knight's attack has to move it away to b1, and after bishop to a6, attacking the weakest pawn on e2 right now. We do see bishop to f3, just a prophylactic move. Duda continues with rook to c8, and after a3, rook to b8. Very strange couple of moves. Looks like he plays rook to c8 because he just wants to protect the pawn on c6. White does have a threat of bringing the rook to c1 and the bishop on e3 to pressurize the pawn here on c6 if the knight ever has to move. But Duda does not have to worry about this pawn on c6 at all. In fact, after rook to b8, if you play bishop to e3, the knight could have been brought back to d7, where after bishop takes, we see knight to e5. We take another pawn as well. Now attacking the bishop here on c6, this should be worse for white. And if you first take the pawn with the queen right here, this resulting position is also not better for white. And so I do think rook to b8 is actually just a better move than rook to c8, since you're going to bring it there anyway to blow open the b-file. But then rook to c8 played by Duda, and after a3 then rook to b8. The engine also thinks this is actually a very bad series of move, because it loses tempo, it loses time, and that time is actually what Carjuana needed to break through the game. He played pawn takes b4, Duda could have also played pawn to b3 right here, and after let's say queen to d2 or c3, Seemingly black is fine, but probably Duda is afraid of this overextended pawn that will be lost in the future, and so he does not play that. Instead plays rook to b8. Kruhana plays pawn takes b4, opening up the a-file for the rook right here. And after rook to b4 to play bishop to e3, attacking the knight on c5. Duda carefully indirectly protects this knight here on c5 by playing queen to b7. Idea is after bishop c5, we have rook to c4, gaining the piece back, attacking the queen. And so of course Fabiano Carjuana did not miss that, place knight to d2, developing a piece, and after rook to b2, queen c3, rook to b5, rook to a3. As we can see, he's using already his open a-file to exert pressure on black's position. After bishop to b7, rook to a7, we do see knight to d7 attacking the pawn here on e5. And so knight to c4, bringing a piece to the center of the board, protecting a pawn here on e5, rook to d8, bishop to e4. Now as you can see, you know, black has a weakness on c6, but has a stronghold on e5, could be pawn to f4 next, pawn to h4 maybe, and maybe queen to c2, extra pressure on the king's side as well. The rook here is doing a lot of things on the queen's side, exerting his own pressure. In the current assessment of the position, Duda is tortured. Duda proceeded to play pawn to c5, hoping to trade off some pieces possible, but then queen to c2, exerting pressure on a7. Also to say, if bishop to e4, queen to e4, now I bring more pieces to the center of the board, and just attacking everybody in the board right now. So Duda plays pawn to h6, just alleviating some of the pressure on h7. But Carjuana being Carjuana proceeded with a very patient move, bishop to d2. This move is so elegant because it traps the rook here on b5. The rook does not have an adequate square to actually run to. And after knight to f8, bishop to d3, again just screening the rook here with the bishop. A lot of us will have played something pawn to f4, or maybe just knight to d6 trying to get the knight 
to the center of the board, taking the bishop away if possible. But Krohona is just a really different breed. Plays bishop to d2, hoping to trap the rook, and after knight to f8, bishop to d3. Rook to d7 is where Duda cracks, and Krohona jumps in with a knight to d6. Idea if bishop takes on d6, we take the rook on b5. This rook is even hanging right here, we cannot take the pawn on e5. And so the rook tucks its tail and moves back with b6. But then queen takes c5, attacking the rook on b6 and also protecting the knight on d6. Do you see how easy it is for Fabian and Caruana to attack and defend at the same time, while his opponent is really screaming for help all the time? This position is already winning-winning for Caruana, and it's just a matter of technique before he can really convert this to a win. As you can see, he brought all his pawn to the king's side, brought his king to safety, and yeah, in this position where black loses too many pieces, and Fabiano being up a knight, Duda resigned in this position. Not to mention the pawn is really crappy in this position, and has no hope to defend or to do anything at all. Do that through in the towel. And so I think if you can play an opening that can force your opponent to make a series of accurate move, and then if he doesn't, he actually blunders and loses the game, I think this opening is still very good to play. Moreover, it does not carry a huge risk at all, so yeah, I think we can just play this from time to time, test it out against some strong opponents, and win some games. The next game also features the one that is played by Caruana in US Championship 2019. So just a few months after he played Duda in the same year. Here the game actually continues in a very standard way of queen to a4 and then pawn to a6 from black. After queen takes c4, b5 and then queen to c2. Very standard way to continue here for white. But after bishop to b7, Fabiano did not continue with bishop to f4. Crashing his pawn on c7 as we discussed in the previous theory video. Fabiano plays bishop to d2 which is a really odd theory right now and the idea is to bring the bishop to c3 and if the knight were to venture to b4 we can just take it off immediately and so Dominguez responded with bishop to e4 which is also a theory queen c1 pawn c6 the argument is that okay you have bishop here on the long diagonal and your queen is really awkward sitting on c1 right here and d1 is no better for white Dominguez here plays pawn to a4 and after knight to d7 both sides is really trying to bring out his pieces to the center of the board but again white just probably has a better edge because he has a big center and he really has planned to push on the king's side if he wishes to Caruana again continued the slow plan of queen to e3 seeing what black does first before he actually commits to a plan a very good strategy to apply in your game is that when the position seems stale and dry you often want to actually just optimize the pieces like what Fabiano Caruana did here which is bringing the piece to the center of the board, hitting everything, everybody um, on the board. And so just an amazing move that Fabiano Caruana pulled over here. I think most of us will have played something like pawn to f4, pawn to f5 or something, to just attack on the king's side, because really that's where we're dominant at. Fabiano Caruana, again, shows us a different thing, a different perspective to actually just be patient and try to milk out the position the best way as possible. Rook to d8 played by Dominguez, and after rook to c1, knight to f8, bishop to f3, Trading off the only annoying pieces on white squares, which is the, the bishop protecting d4 as well. So the queen can move somewhere. And so again, we just see Fabiano Corjuana brings all these pieces to the center of the board, trying to optimize them in a way that creates an attack on the opponent's king. And here I thought knight to g4 as a very interesting move from Fabiano Corjuana, not trading pieces, because again, you just want to preserve an attack. You do not want to trade off pieces that quickly and reach a position where black can equalize. So just another excellent move from Fabiano Conjuana. Dominguez continues with knight to f6, but after knight to e3, rook to a3. We see pawn to e5 from Fabiano Conjuana attacking the knight here on e5, dislodging the knight from the king's side, so he could have some chances to attack on the king's side later on. Now I do think knight to d5 as a very bad move, because after knight to d5, knight to d5, if we can see this kind of liquidation, black has a very weak backward pawn that one could have targeted with something like queen to c2, rook to d3, rook to c3, or maybe rook to c1 maybe, can just really harm this pawn on c6. And so Dominguez plays a very nice move with knight to d7, just retreating. But here is where Corjuana gets in with knight to e4. He does not care about the pawn on b3 at all, because after rook to a1, not only we're actually controlling the a-file, we're also in some position threatening to actually just win the rook here on b3, because it's just friended too far and it's alone, with potential knight to d2 and knight c5 in the future. And so obviously Dominguez politely declined the offer and placed knight to b6, trying to bring the knight to a4 to d5 in the future, enabling him to take maybe next turn, so that after he takes the knight here could have jumped to a4 as we talk about. Fabiano continued queen to h5, just continuing his attack on the king's side, and after rook to b3, knight to g4. And yeah, if you see this position, you are probably certain something is just going to be sacrificed around the 6th rank, and so the near spidey sends tingling as well and plays knight to d5, hoping to get the knights involved in some kingside defense later on. And now again, 
Fabiano Corona plays Rook to A1, just a simple move of controlling the A file right here. And he's met by a mistake from Dominguez with Rook to A3. Problem with this move is that the Queen here is overloaded protecting the King side and also the Rook. Fabiano Corona can place Knight to H6, temporarily sacrificing a piece because after Pawn to H6, Knight to F6, you're forced to take. Because if you don't take, I take on H6 and it's a check, probably a mate. And if you think Queen to F8 defends everything, Queen to G4 check, King to H8 or King to G7. It's followed by rook to a3 and queen to g7 if queen were to take on a3. And so the devastating threat for Dominguez, he sacrificed the rook here on g3, take the pawn on f6. Fabiano is currently two pawns down for the exchange, but of course his piece is more active. Queen g4 check and after rook to a6, we can already see the only compensation for black is the running pawn, the pass pawn here on b file. And without that, Dominguez is actually nothing. So queen d8, first they protecting the knight, rook to e7, we do see queen to f8 protecting f7 pawn. Queen to f3, double attack, we see king to g8. And so everything is protected, but we lose the pawn on c6. And so this position is already winning for Fabiano Corjuana. But just after Dominguez plays queen to d8, Fabiano Corjuana blunders with king to h2. Not sure what this move is actually all about. Maybe he's really trying to get off the light squares. Maybe there's a threat of queen to d5 check. Trading off the queen, he does not want that place king to h2. But this allows another avenue of check, which is queen to f6. Probably he misses that. Idea is queen to f2 and try to petrol that way. Probably Fabiano Corjuana actually sees that as well, but he probably thought he has king to a3 or maybe something like queen to g2 to protect against a check. And so he continues with queen to e4, but after queen to f2, this is proven to be a perpetual check for black. And even after that, we see um, Dominguez winning another pawn back on d4. And after g5, h5, just completely shutting down the king side here. Dominguez still has the b pawn alive and it's just going to be pushed down the board later on in the game. Fabiano tries to create an opening for white to get in, but honestly there's nothing that white can do to actually just have a devastating attack on black anymore. Black has two pass pawns here in the center of the board, alright, one on the queen side, and then white has one pawn that is stopped by h pawn here. And so the attacking pieces is just the queen and the rook, but black has more than that. Black has a knight, a queen, two pass pawns that is pushing, a king that is going to march up all the way down the board to actually support the pawn. And after a move like this, we do see both sides just trying to raise his pawn, but in the end, um, black has an ultimate defense hiding on b1. And obviously, if white queen's here, we can take the queen. So let's say if he queen's here, we can take the queen. It's a check. Um, yeah, in this position, I think it's a draw anyway. Fabiano goes queen to a8, but then we do see a perpetual check that ended up in the position being a draw anyway. And so no matter how you look at it, this position of Catalan with queen to a4 is a sideline, but more often than not, it can create a problem for black. To the point where black has to make the only move. And this position in any case does not carry a huge risk. And it's easy to play. So I think everybody from beginner up to expert and grandmaster level can try this opening out. And really just kick some bum. Now with that said, that's the end of the video. I hope you do have some fun reviewing some of the game played by Caruana. And if you do enjoy it, please press the like button. Otherwise, see you in the next one.